Good morning, good morning, good morning, and good morning. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And we know that because truly God has made it possible for us to be together one more again. Welcome to this Sunday morning service. We are celebrating Men's Month, all month for the month of June. We're going to have Pastor Rodney Blaysmith pray us into service. Amen as he comes. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save and to fit it for the sky. To serve the present age, my calling to fulfill, oh, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. Oh, merciful and everlasting Father, we come to you once again just to say thank you. God, before we open our mouths to declare and ask for anything, God, we have to thank you. Thank you for last night's lying down and this early morning's rising. God, we thank you for your filling of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, that's going to guide us and lead us into all truth. God, we thank you for our health, our bodies, and our strength, God. We ask a special healing on those that are recovering this morning, God. God, we ask that you bless this service and let it flow in the manner that you see fit. God, if there's anything in us that is not like you, we ask you to cast it into the sea of forgetfulness right now in the name of Jesus. God, let your Holy Ghost fill each and every last one of us. God, we ask a special prayer and blessing upon the angel of this house, Pastor John F. Clayton and his family, God. Give him the will and the do to do your will. It's in Jesus' name that we all declare and decree. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you. And then next, we're going to have praise and worship by Minister of Music, Sergio Carr Watson. I'm going to come. Praise the Lord, everybody, for his great and marvelous works, for what he's done for us, for who he is, and for who he continues to be. We say thank you for being God this morning. Thank you for being great and righteous. And we just want to send up the refrain this morning that our God indeed reigns with power and majesty. Amen. He reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above every name, our God reigns, our God reigns, Lord, you reign above every name, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign, hey, hey. With power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Come on, sing with me. Our God reigns. My God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Yes. Lord, you reign. Above every name, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Hey, hey. Power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Can we go up? Oh, my God reigns. My God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Yes, my God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. With power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Yes, you do with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. This is Pastor Clayton. Oh, my God reigns. My God reigns, yes. Lord, you reign above every day. Hey, my God reigns. Our God reigns, yes. Lord, you reign above every name. With 
in power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Oh, yes, you do in power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Oh, oh, my God reigns. My God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above every name, yeah, my God reigns, my God reigns, Lord, you reign above every name, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Oh, yes, you do, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. This is my favorite part. Then it says, over my circumstance, giving me another chance, you reign. Yeah. Over my circumstance, giving me another chance, you reign. <clears throat> With power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Over my circumstance, giving me another chance. Somebody just a creed said, Over my circumstance, giving me another chance. You reign with power and majesty, dominion, authority. You reign. Over my circumstance. Giving me another chance, you right. Over my circumstance, giving me another chance, you right. 
Now, I know we're in our several different places driving and in our homes, but could you just lift your voice and testify that he's the God who reigns, that he's the God who rules, that he's the God who controls, that he's the God who has our life in his hands, and he knows just what he's doing. So glad that all by my circumstance, even me and not a chance to reign. So glad about it that with power and majesty, you reign. Yes, you do. So glad that over my circumstances, giving me another chance, you reign. You reign. Now we'll turn you back into the hands of our minister in training, Minister Jennifer Smith. Amen, amen. Thank you, Minister Sergei S. Carl Watson. <clears throat> now we're going to have scripture by Pastor Rodney Blake Smith. One moment as he comes to the screen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the newsome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His trust shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that washeth at noonday, that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eye shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. I have read the 91st Psalm, verses 1 through 11. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen and amen again. <clears throat> now we'll have our church motto. You can say it along with me on the screen. This is the Lord's church and Jesus is Lord. This is the church is being established by his word. This is the church that love is building. The gates of hell shall not prevail. This is the Lord's church and Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord today and every day at Empowering Word Ministries and we thank God. If this is your first time joining us or even if it's your second or third time, we're so glad that you took the time to worship with us. We do not, we do not, uh, <clears throat> if you're looking to find out more about what our ministry is doing, you could, we can be reached at our, at our church email address, The Empowering Word Ministries, or you can follow us on all social media sites at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also now have a YouTube page that's Empowering Word with no space between the G and the W and Empowering Word Ministries Incorporated. Amen. And now it's time for offering a part of the service. We hope everyone can participate in, if you can, even if it's just sending us a good prayer. Amen. We have two options if you'd like to give to our ministry. That's Cash App at Dollar Sign Empowering. Our trustee team is asking that you please include your full name. That's your first and your last name so that your giving can be applied. Or you can mail your checks and money orders to Empowering Word Ministries, 22 Hudson Place, Willingboro, New Jersey, 08046. Again, you can use our cash app, dollar sign empowering, or mail your checks and money orders to Empowering Word Ministries, 22 Hudson Place, Willingboro, New Jersey. A little bit of music.
that's all right because we move forward. Amen. Doesn't want to work today. So we'll go right into announcements. As you know, this is Men's Month, and so if we have Men's Month, then we have to have Men's Day. And our Men's Day is going to be June 20th. That's next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. right here in the Zoom room. If you've seen our flyers on our social media sites, you know that our speaker of the hour is Minister Isaac Douglas, a great man of God. June 27th will be our general church meeting right after service. That's where you can come with your questions, comments, remarks. And just find out more about what our church has been doing for the past six months and what we're planning on doing for the next six months. Amen. We have an upcoming presentation. You may see somebody familiar if you go. Love to Dance Ministries is presenting The Lion King. June 26, 2021, they're having two showtimes, 3 and 7 p.m. That's going to be a great time. Are you looking for prayer? Well, we certainly have it here at the Empowering Word Ministries. Please contact one of our church deacons, that's Deacon Gigi or Deacon Sassy. You can also send a prayer request by email to our church email address, theempoweringwordministries at gmail.com. And now, still focusing on Men's Month, we're going to have a reflection by Minister Karan Weems. One moment. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today I want to talk about the male figure in my life that inspired me, my father. He taught us so much as children, but most importantly, he instilled so much knowledge into us as becoming into adulthood. He taught us about about businesses. He taught us about stocks and bonds. He taught us about financial stability, allowing our money to work for us instead of us working for the money. Most importantly, he wanted all eight of his children to become entrepreneurs. He taught us how to establish businesses, how to run them, and how to decide where location would be best possible for your business to grow. Another note he taught us on is about home ownership. He always told us that no matter what we do, buy a home so that your home can stay within your stay within the family. You never know what goes on in life, and you may have to lend out a helping hand to help one another. Most importantly, my dad was big on family, as I am to this day. He always said, family is there for you, man, no matter what. And most importantly, he told us to keep loving. Don't, Don't hate anybody, because you never know. You never know. You don't want to block your blessings. And to this day, even though he's been deceased, for some time, I still wish he was here because some of the teachings that he taught us, I just wanna say, dad, thank you for teaching me everything that I needed to know and more because growing up in the streets of Philadelphia, there are some things that we must learn at home first. Take care, everybody. I love you. Have a good one. Amen. Amen. That was nice. That was great. And I love these reflections. Now we're going to have the word of God from the man of God, a great man of God here at the Empowering Word Ministries. One moment as he comes to the screen, Pastor John F. Clayton Jr. God bless you and praise the Lord. Everybody is so good. Amen. I'm going to say it like we were in the building. It's so good to be in the house. Amen. Of the Lord. Amen. And it's so good to see all of you, to all the people of God that are on in the uh, Zoom room and all of those individuals that are on uh, Facebook Live. Amen. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God. Amen. For being here with you and thank God for being saved today. Amen. Pray for Pastor Dana. She is out doing the work of ministry. Amen. A couple of the other uh, saints are out doing the work of ministry. And so Uh, they might join us a little bit later. And I'm also grateful today, amen, I think I saw her, amen. uh, St. Connor, amen, praise the Lord, amen. I saw her earlier, amen, online, and we just want to let you know um, and let her know that we are praying for her, amen, in her time of recovery. And we bless the Lord, amen, that God is able to do just what he said he would do. 
Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this church. We thank you for this people. But most of all, we thank you for your great salvation that you sent to us, that you're able to save us from wherever we are and meet us wherever we are. Now, God, look upon this word, move the preacher out of the way. God, I pray that this word would encourage your people, touch their hearts and inspire them for a closer relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I am so excited, amen, about what the Lord is getting ready to do, amen, for each one of us, amen. I'm happy, amen. And listen, I don't harbor any hatred, amen, any dissent, any jealousy in my heart, amen. I'm a little too old for that. That's for young people, amen, and for immature people, amen. And so I bless the Lord that I love everybody, amen, and there's nothing that they can do about it. The word of the Lord comes today out of 1 Samuel, the third chapter and the 10th verse. 1 Samuel, the third chapter and the 10th verse. Let's get that scripture. Amen. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak for thy servant heareth. Speak for thy servant heareth. So we all know that man has five natural senses, feeling or touching. Many of us have the ability, smelling, sight, tasting, and hearing. Many people also believe that man has a sixth sense, right? But here today, we want to acknowledge just these, the feeling or touching, smelling, seeing, seeing, tasting, <clears throat> and hearing. In the economy of God, the most important of these is hearing. And why am I saying that? For in the life of the believer, it is because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing <clears throat> and hearing by the word of God. We are often admonished in the scriptures. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Jesus told them, he said, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not because you are not my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, my God, and I know them and they follow me. And in John, it says this, and a stranger will not, they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Paul wrote it this way. There are many voices. There are many kinds of voices in the world, and no kind is without signification. If then I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be to him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh will be a barbarian unto me. Now the translation of this one speaks around languages, but we know languages are an output of voice. So what am I saying? We must know the voice of God. Amen, listen, I understand, amen. You know the God of your mama, amen. You know the God of your dad, you know the God of the bishop, you know the God of the church mother, but you must get to know the voice of God for yourself. Then you must know what your voice sounds like. What does it mean to have your voice heard in the earth? What are the voices, the many voices of others, and then the voice of the enemy? To distinguish between them is critical to our walk with God. And so I want to ask you today, are you clear on who and what you are hearing? My God today, they taught me as a young man in the kingdom of God in the church, Know yourself, know the enemy, and know God, and be able to distinguish between those so you know that no that so that when people call you a name, you're gonna answer to a name that God didn't give you. My God, if they required something of you and asked you to do something that did not fall in alignment to what God was saying, you would then not obey. Hearing God clearly and correctly is the difference between victory defeat 
and laying hold on to the promises of God that lead to abundance. Listen, hearing, and I'm going to explain this word hearing in a minute, leads to, and hearing clearly leads to abundance in God. It is those that listen to the voice of God and respond accordingly. Listen again, you listen to the voice of God and respond accordingly that are able to embrace the yes and amen of the promises of God. You see, the promises are true, but we need to listen and hear them right to be able to appropriate them in our lives. When you have heard God right about your situation and who you are, you will be able to be all that God has called you to be and will not be easily tossed to and fro by every whim of man and be not distracted by alluring attractions. Could it be, my God, could it be that you have been hearing God through the filter of your past, through the filter of friends and through the filter of parents and through the filter of some preacher or teacher? Are you hearing God through your flesh? And has it caused you not to receive a word that will change your life forever? When God speaks to us, God uses words and concepts that are familiar to us. I've never heard God say this, John, riddle me this. Oh my, I never heard God play the jokester or the riddler. God is clear and succinct when God speaks. God speaks to us right where we are. He clearly speaks and plainly so, so that we can embrace and understand where he wants us to go, what he wants us to do and who God wants us to be. So some of you are saying, well, pastor, how does God speak to us? God uses, my God today, God uses various means to get his message across to you. God can speak in your circumstance. Has anybody ever had God speak to you through your circumstance? God can speak through illness. Good God Almighty. God has spoken to me often, Mother Lena, through heartbreak and through disappointment. God can speak to us. Some of us don't like this. God can speak to us through our brokenness. God speaks to us in our humility, in a kite contrite and a broken spirit. God can speak to us in times of loss. In 1 Kings, Elijah is in a difficult place. My God, he believes that all the prophets of Jehovah have been slain and he is the only one left. He is hiding in a cave in order to protect his life. This is the same man of God that wrought miracles, but now he is afraid of what is next in his life. God needs to redirect him. Listen to what I'm saying today. God needs to redirect him. And I want you to know that nothing re will redirect you like a life-changing situation. Then the scripture says further down, and he said, go forth and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by in a great and strong wind, rent the mountains, and broken pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord, good God Almighty, was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. God knows how to get our attention so that we will pay attention to the real voice of the Lord. Can you hear God now, good God Almighty? God is trying to tell you something about your life and about your circumstance and about what is next. The expectation of the prophet almost caused him to miss God. Remember this, beloved. When you get used to God operating in a particular way, we program and limit our experiences with God. God has a right to change his MO, his modus operandi. Good God Almighty, hallelujah. Here's the thing, the MO of God might change, but let me be clear about this. God's will is always clear. So what is hearing? Hearing is simply the act of perceiving sound by the ear. If we are not hearing impaired, hearing simply happens. Some of you all are hearing me today. Amen, you're thinking about what's for dinner next. Some of you are hearing me today and wondering, when will pastor be over this message? But listening 
is something you do consciously and you choose to listen. Listening requires concentration so that your brain processes meaning from the words and sentences that you are hearing. Listening leads to learning. Listen to this. In God, listening leads to victory. Hallelujah. Listening leads to endurance. In God, listening leads to victory. It leads to power. It leads to blessing. In 1 Samuel 3, 9 and 10, it says, therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and it shall be. If he called thee, thou shalt say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Early in this scripture, this is the call of Samuel. And Samuel, as a young man, often heard a man several times, a voice calling him. And he was confused as to the origin of the voice. He was so used to hearing Eli, hallelujah, call him, my God, in the temple, but was not used to hearing God call him. This was the context of this spirit. And so the man of God, Eli, says to him, the next time that you hear the voice, good God Almighty, speaking to you, speak back and say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. The word here is shama. The word here is shama. It means to hear intellectually with the intention to obey. You see, some of us hear God's word. It's just sound, but we have no attention to obey. That means we're not practicing listening. We're just hearing. Uh-huh. Shama implies action. My God today. It implies action. Speak, Lord, and I will act. My God. It means to hear, to listen, to give attention to, to understand, to submit to, to obey. There is only one word in Hebrew for obedience. It's the same word, shama. In Hebrew, they don't disconnect hearing from obedience. If I hear it, good God Almighty, I have to obey it. If I hear the voice of God and I hear the word of God, if I hear the direction of God, if I hear the prophetic word of God, I must do what? Shama. I must hear it and obey. Good God Almighty, I just heard the hymn writer say, as we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. And as we do his good will, he abides with us still. It is only as we what? Trust, good God Almighty, lean on him and obey. To move in God, we must listen with the intent to obey. In order to hear God, we must interpret what he is saying to us correctly. Correctly. We must hear it correctly, not distorted. Often we cannot hear God because of our emotional state. Amen. Many times when we're working on the altar, and I'm glad Mother Lena is here with me. Mother Lena knows sometimes people come to the altar, right, Mother? And they're so excited. Good God Almighty, excited to hear the word of God something particular and specific that God would say to them. They're shouting and jumping and they're overfilled with joy. And sometimes, amen, the elder saints have to say, baby, calm down. Calm down. Because if you're emotional, you can't hear, good God Almighty, what I have to say. Amen. If you're emotional, amen, you're going to miss something. And sometimes we whisper specifically in a person's ear so it enters past their emotion. I'm telling y'all a little spiritual secret. It goes past their emotional state and goes into their inner man that is renewed day by day. Good God Almighty. So don't be upset, amen, when the leader, when the prophet says, baby, I know you're excited. I know that you're overwhelmed. You're anticipating Amen. What God is going to do. But right now, amen, I need you to calm down and I need you to do what? Listen. Good God Almighty, what God is saying. You must get past your emotional state. In order to hear God correctly, we must get rid of what we're holding to from the past. We got to get rid of anger, disappointment, resentment, and, a, and an unwillingness to forgive. We have to throw away envy and strife. The extent to which a person comprehends, understands what God is saying, listens to and embraces and responds to the voice of God will depend upon these things. 
The first thing it depends upon is how much the individual knows, good God Almighty, the topic of the person speaking. I read this scripture, it says this, the sheep that are my own hear and listen to my voice and to them, I know them and they will follow me. The next thing that determines, listen, 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 listen. You got to know who you're walking with and you got to know who you're listening to. You got to know to be able to distinguish be between the many voices in the earth. The next thing is that we have to determine what is our receptivity to the message. Are you open? My God. Are you open, amen, to the message, to hearing what thus saith the Lord? Many times, if it's not a prosperity message, the people of God don't want to hear it. If a car or a house or a woman or a man is not attached to it, amen, we do not want to hear it. Many times when I was young, when I used to hear Ephesians 3 and 20, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that works in us. In my immaturity, I thought that was about material stuff. I thought that was about a date. I thought that was about a job. But when I hear it now, Mother Lena, amen, what I hear God is saying that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. I think about the issues that I have that I cannot share uh, with anybody else, that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above my issues. When I think about my limitations, oh my, and my idiosyncrasies and my inabilities, when I hear that, I hear that God is limitless and is able to work through me in my willingness. I think about the stuff that I have done and that I need to be delivered from. And I think about the miracles that I need for tomorrow and my soul gets happy because it will come to pass according to the power that works in us. Finally, the relationship that you have, God bless you, God bless you, people of God, the relationship and trust that exists between God and the hearer determines our ability to operate in the area of I have not seen. And I'm going to say something. Could it be, good God Almighty, that you are not operating in the place of I have not seen and ear have not heard is because your ears have been itching and you've been listening to other people's perspective about who you are and what you ought to do and what you should be in God. You got to release that and hear the unadulterated voice of God that will shift you into your next place of miracle. Your relationship with him determines whether you can lay hold on to what he has said about you and your life. We walk by faith. Listen to what I'm saying. We walk by faith uh -huh, and not by sight. And faith comes not from seeing the word, but faith comes not from heal, feeling the word or sensing the word, but faith comes, oh my, from hearing the word of God. You must trust the God that you hear about but you cannot see. Learn, beloved, how to evaluate what you hear by relating it to uh -huh, what you already know. Consider the speaker's purpose uh -huh, for the message. What is God's motive for you? God's motive for us is found in Jeremiah 29 and 11. I'm gonna read it in the NIV. It's still the word. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now, you will not hear that scripture. My God, if you're hearing it through a distorted filter, you will not hear that scripture, that God has a plan for you, a plan to prosper you. If you're hearing messages of hate, messages of dissension, messages of strife. You will not hear that if that is the filter, my God today, that you are hearing this scripture from. Make sure that when you hear, you hear God unfiltered. The only filter that is an appropriate filter to hear God through is God's word and his love. Woo, good God Almighty, hallelujah. The only filter 
my God, today, Pastor Rodney, that I'm listening to God through is not somebody else's expectations, but God's plan for me and God's word for me. Do not be influenced by past experiences, bad attitudes, and our lack of knowledge of someone else's lack of knowledge and false perceptions in other people. We must not daydream when God is speaking. Good God Almighty. We can't be preoccupied with personal matters when God is speaking in our lives. We must move past our prejudices and our biases. And let me stop there. That's gonna be the hard work for the people of God and for the church to move past our prejudices and biases about how we think things should go and who should have a seat at the table. We gotta get past our preconceived ideas and notions, our perception of ourselves and our lack of sense of unworthiness. These are filters that will cause us not to hear God clearly. Some of us, our minds are constipated and cluttered. We need a spiritual cleansing, my God, today. I heard the word say that he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying. Spiritual things cannot be discerned by flesh, good God Almighty. Flesh will tell you that you have to feel joy for it to be real. Oh my, flesh will tell you, you got to see your blessing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your flesh will tell you that you're not blessed until you see your blessing, until you can touch your blessing. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. If I don't see it, this is, I'm like Missouri, you got to show me. Listen, that's now how it operates in God. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, my God, and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. You got to hear it, my God, today. Amen. Before you see it. That's not how it works in the spirit realm. Amen. God doesn't always let us see a thing, amen, and experience a thing before it comes to fruition. You see, you got to hear it before you see it. Pastor, what are you talking about? In 1 Kings 17, the prophet told the people, there would be no rain. Good God Almighty. Yeah, yeah, he did, Brother Sir Jazz. There's going to be no rain, minister, and everything dried up. Have you been there in your life? Amen. Was When nothing was coming in, good God Almighty, and nothing was going out, no resources or limited resources. And then in chapter 18 of 1 Kings, Elijah tells Ahab, Get up, eat and drink, for there is the what sound, good God Almighty, there is the sound of the abundance of rain. He that hath an ear, let him hear. I don't care what you're experiencing, my God today. I don't care what you're going through. I hear, good God Almighty, the sound of the abundance of rain. And what you have to be able to do is say, speak, Lord, your servant hears. Come on, get rid of that filter of unworthiness, get rid of that filter of discouragement and hear the sound, good God Almighty, of the abundance of rain. Speak, Lord, speak in my spirit. We say we want a word from the Lord, but we don't want to do the work to really hear the word of the Lord. Learn how to listen to God and hear God with the intent to obey. The next part of that scripture as I close says this, God stood. Woo! Good God Almighty, hallelujah. God stood, amen, the next time that he spoke to Samuel. He stood, not only did he speak, God stationed himself. When Samuel got rid of all the noise and got rid of the confusion and all the clutter, God made himself, listen to what I'm saying. Oh my, my God today, thank you, Jesus. My God, thank you, Holy Ghost. When he got rid of the clutter, listen, God called him again. But this time when he heard, Brother Sir Jazz, when he heard, guess what? God stood up and made himself present. Listen, God makes himself present when you hear. Woo, good God Almighty. When you listen, God makes himself alive and resident present in your situation. He made himself present where Samuel was. Can you imagine? What would happen if you prepare and if we prepare ourselves to hear God? God would stand up 
my God, and be present where we are. Hallelujah. Listen, with the voice of God comes the vision of God. With the voice of God comes the provision of God. With the voice of God comes the deliverance of God. Listen, God speaks. Woo, good God Almighty. My God today, this is not in my lesson, but amen. In the beginning, amen, God spoke a thing and it was so. Good God Almighty, God speaks and things obey. Hallelujah. He is the God of Shama. I speak it and I think it and it happens. What would happen if we listened with the intent to obey the very voice of God? Let's make sure that every day when we get up, amen, in our daily prayer, we say, speak, Lord, your servant hear it. Listen, I can't make a move. Let me say this a different way. I don't want to make a move. I can move when I want to move. I don't want to make a move unless I hear God, my God today. Woo! I don't want to open my mouth until I hear what God has said to me. Go, my, I heard the prophet said, open up your mouth. Good God Almighty. I heard God speak to that prophet and I'll speak for you. Hallelujah. My God today, I don't want to say anything or be anything that I haven't heard God say about me. My God today, God speak. Speak to your people. Unclutter your lives. Unclutter Get rid of all those filters. Well, you know, the bishop said I couldn't be this or the church mother. See, we don't worry about what the world says, amen, that we cannot be. We worry about what spiritual leadership, I'm gonna help somebody today. We worry about what spiritual leaders said in the past and we didn't know what their motivation was. Hallelujah. But today I want you to know you can be all that God would have you to be. Speak, Lord. Speak to your people. Speak in their lives. Well, my mother didn't believe me. Amen. Your mama's not God. Good God Almighty, mama's not God. Mother might have a perspective. Amen. But God sees the end, oh my, from the beginning. Good God. God has the ability to call things. Mama can't do that. Mama can't call things, amen, that are not as if they are. Listen, beloved, you better put your trust in Jesus. Good God Almighty, and not, the, and not in the trust of men and in the voice of man. Amen. Well, you know, that's my friend. Your friend will fool you every time. You better learn how to ear hustle and get close to God. And hear what God has to say. What is God affirming in you? I learned a long time ago that my affirmation could not come from the people, Sir Jazz, because many times I was misunderstood by the people. They thought I was a certain way because they really didn't know me. Amen. And then I had to push aside what the people said, what I heard, what the people said. And so you got to be careful. Can I drop something else, mother, on the people? You got to be careful what you let people whisper in your ear. Oh, my. Got to be careful about what you let people say in your spirit. Good God Almighty. Oh, my. And you got to be careful who you let lay hands on you. Amen. Everybody can whisper things in my spirit. Good God Almighty. I got a Holy Ghost filter. Good God Almighty, if it doesn't get past, if it doesn't align with the word of God, I don't have a problem saying I don't receive it. But you see, the problem is many of us haven't laid out before God to hear God for ourselves. There should never be a word, amen, that comes from a woman of God or a man of God that's fresh to you that you haven't heard on your face before God. Speak, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Speak in my quiet time. Good God Almighty, help me to hear you more clearly. I don't want to hear anything that's not you. Many of us are confused today because we hear God through people. Good God Almighty, but try this. Hear God afresh. Hear God fresh from the throne of, of earth, from of heaven. Hallelujah. He still speaks and his voice is sweet. Hallelujah. Learn how to hear God for yourself. Not filtered by people. Let's get in alignment with what God is saying, not with what people are saying. Well, you know, you know, listen, I have declared and I have believed that the people and God's people, listen, are afraid of more of what the people have to what mother say than what God has to say. We're ready to obey with the intent of hearing from people and obey them than we are to hear from God. Listen, God will never lead you astray. 
No, he won't. God will never leave you astray. God will never speak something that damages you. Good God Almighty, I'm going to help somebody today. God will never say anything that tears you apart, that tears down your self-esteem. Oh, my. Good God Almighty, God is always speaking edifying words. And if God has to correct you, good God Almighty, read the scripture. God corrects and then he heals. Good God Almighty. God repairs. Hallelujah. And he restores. God will never leave us damaged. Hallelujah. Mean people and mean preachers and mean pastors leave us wounded without a way of healing us. But God is not like that. God will always heal us. God will always restore us. God will always put the salve of the spirit, the balm of Gilead upon us that is able to heal our souls. I pray that you are encouraged today. Amen. That you are lifted today. Amen. That you would seek to hear God. Let me give you a tip. Sit in a room. Amen. Turn off all your electronic devices and see what God has to say to you. Listen, Paul said this, I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. How was Paul persuaded? God said something to Paul and God delivered. Woo! Good God Almighty. God said something to Paul. Amen. Paul experienced something and God delivered. Paul sat with God in his struggles. Paul sat with God in persecution and was able to hear God. Because there's going to be a time when you can't see God, but you can always hear God. You can hear God through his word. Be encouraged today. Be strengthened today. This, thing, it, this ends our service for today. Amen. Listen, if you don't know the Lord Jesus, amen, in the pardon of your sins, amen, he is still saving today. Yes, he is. But you have to know that you need to be saved. Amen. You need to know, amen, that the place that where you are is not working for you. I believe that people don't need salvation if they believe there's nothing wrong, amen. But you have to realize that the way I'm living is not where I want it to be. It's not where God would have it to be, amen. And that means that we need to be saved, good God Almighty, from ourselves, hallelujah. We need to be saved from ourselves. What are you talking about, pastor? The prodigal son was caught up in himself, oh my. And the Bible says that when he what, uh, brother Sir Jazz, you may call him pastor, brother Sir Jazz, when he came to himself, he says, have not my father treating his servants better than I'm being treated now. In order to be saved from our condition, we must come to ourselves. But here's the thing, until you come to yourself, stay close. Woo, good God Almighty. Don't run away, but stay close until you can come to yourself. Listen, the plan of salvation is very easy. Confess with your mouth, believe with your heart that God has raised them from the dead and thou shall be saved. Pastor, do you have to run around the church and fall out on the floor? Amen, do I have to foam? Amen, do they have to have a bucket? That was old time church, you have to have a bucket. Amen, you have to have purging service. You have to be out on the floor all night. Amen, because the saints thought that everybody that wasn't saved had a demon. Amen, amen. No, confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God has raised them from the dead and thou shalt be saved. It's just that quick, amen. He can turn your life around. I'm a witness, I have some witnesses here, amen, that God has turned their life around. Now, here's the thing, will I be perfect the next day that God turns my life around? No, you won't, amen. But I'm gonna say like we used to say, stay in the race. Woo, good God Almighty, stay in the race. Uh-huh, keep on pressing. Hallelujah. Keep on pressing. Keep on moving and getting closer to God. Amen. Your salvation is instantaneous, but your sanctification, good God Almighty, being like Jesus. Woo! Good God Almighty. Getting like them, getting to be like Jesus is a work in progress. Pastor's been in this way for a long time. Good God Almighty. Amen. It's a work in progress. Listen, the things that I used to do, I don't do no more. And the places that I wanted to go, watch this. I don't want to go no more. Amen. But it's been a process. Listen, we can walk you through the process. Amen. We've been through the process and such as God has saved us. Amen. And delivered us through the process. Amen. God can do the same for you. Listen, we love you. Amen. And there's nothing. <clears throat> 
that you can do about it. Amen. You could be the meanest and most cantankerous person. Amen. Amen. But we're going to love you to life in Jesus Christ. This is our prayer. Amen. For you today. Amen. That you would hear God, that you would hear this invitation. Jesus is still working miracles. Amen. When he saved my soul, good God Almighty. Ah, good God Almighty. When he saved my soul, then he made me whole. That was a miracle of love and grace. This ends our service today. Take time, no matter where you are. I pray that the weather is good. Amen. That you're around good people that will love on you and encourage you and seek to hear God wherever you are. God bless you and amen.